what if I wanted something like this mixed with something classic like this? <laughs> Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel today. We got a detailed look at these potential bad boys. I'm not gonna find out. I'm just gonna tell you what they're all about. But these, my friends, are the Reebok JJ4. JJ Watt is not a basketball player, for those of you guys that don't know. I actually don't know too much about the guy. But this is uh, the fourth shoe, the fourth signature trainer of JJ Watt. There was a task placed on the designer. What was that task, might you ask? Give me a Reebok question that I can train in. So, these things are kind of interesting. I don't think that this is a shoe for me personally as far as training goes because I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't do deadlifts or anything like that but for those types of shoes you normally need something fairly specific and that means stability and almost no cushion. So if we're looking at something from a different brand like a Nike Metcon these are fairly popular but if you really look at these when you take out the insides which is this guy right there it's pretty firm and all of that stuff but when you take that out it's essentially like a Kobe where there's nothing in it. So this is all you get when you're normally inside of a gym training. So a lot of people like to use Vans, Chucks, stuff like that. They're cheap, they're affordable, and they give you the same effect. However, some people like a little bit of cushion, a little bit. And that's what something like this has. You get all that stability in the front, but there's actually float ride in the back, which is dope. Something I find interesting though, is that they don't tell you that there's float ride on Reebok.com. Float ride is amazing. They should talk all about it. It is amazing. And so I don't know why they don't have that tech spec on the website, but it does say it right there on the shoe at least. So in the heel, right there there's a float ride puck and float ride for those of you guys that don't know is essentially p-backs p-backs is essentially boost therefore float ride is boost without being called boost so you get a little bit of cushion back there for like heel spurs and things like that just to give you a little bit of extra but it's all inside of this eva carrier and therefore you got a lot of stability so you feel stable you feel grounded but you don't feel like you're on nothing a lot of people actually like to work out with no shoes on i think it's real interesting the way that things have transitioned it's almost like running where people thought that they needed one thing cushion heel to toe drop blah 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 all this stuff fast forward to 2020 and science shows otherwise so it's just really cool so this is something like that where it's like there's a lot of additional stuff that goes into training shoes that you don't actually think about and i think it's kind of cool so the outsole right here very reminiscent of a reebok question in terms of visuals but you can see that the patterns itself similar but not the same this guy right here is a radio so i think that's cool you can do exercises outside of lifting with this shoe so that's the the main point of jj's sneaker line is that you're able to do more than just lifting. You could do all your circuit training for your upcoming season, but you could do it in a shoe that's got some comfort to it. Something that I also think is interesting is that rear section. You got a little bit of the turf. I'm a 90s head, so when I see stuff like this on a shoe, like obviously like Reeboks and other brands have had it, but I think of uh, some of the classic Nike turf trainers. Brett Favre had one that was super dope. It had a cool strap, it had wavy lines on the, and it had this like metallic thing that said Zoom Air on it. It was super cool. I wanted those so bad. <sighs> I remember people used to hoop in those like on the black tops and stuff at lunch. But yeah, every time I see these little nubby things, I always think of that shoe. Anyways, you have a little bit of JJ branding right here. This little logo. I think that's kind of a cool touch. It's also functional and not just aesthetically pleasing. So what this actually does is it rides up and gives you a little bit of heel stability and all that stuff. So it acts like a heel counter or cage. You do have one of those right back here. It's not super sturdy or anything, but it's sturdy enough. Something that I think is interesting though, I was talking to the, um, I really like the way that this feels. This like gets me going. I was talking to the designer, his name is Trevor. Shout out to Trevor, by the way, he's the one that sent these over. I was talking to him and I was just like, man, where did you get this idea from? I swear this is on like a shoe that I know of, but I have so many shoes in my brain that I was brain farting. And he was like, a little bit of the Air Jordan 15. And I was like, <gasps> how did I not remember that? That's one of my favorite Jordans ever. So yeah, I like that. And I like that it's got the Reebok logo back there. It would have been super dope if they were able to paint things on the top and bottom. That way, depending on how you're moving your foot, it would give you that kind of like weird visual of different logos like JJ's logo, maybe the Reebok question logo, that little guy. That would have been really cool, man. It would have been dope. But anyways, the rest of the upper is an interesting material. It's all textile, at least most of it. And they call it flex weave and it's done up in two different ways. So the forefoot is done in one way and then the midfoot and everything is done in a different direction. 
direction so it's got a different like kind of like tightness pattern to it it's pretty cool the way that it works is essentially like a finger trap because it's all woven or interwoven with one another so the more tension that you push on it the tighter it's going to get so again you're able to do lots of different things not just lifting in these you're going to be able to do all kinds of stuff like that that ladder rope i hate that thing the little hurdle things i also hate those too i don't like training on top of all of the textile is a little bit of fuse i like the way that it's split on the toe because this one half right here is just all of the textile and stuff but this other half it almost gives me that pearlescent vibe you know what i mean i don't know if that was intentional or just happened to be like a really cool accident but i just really like that it's almost like that i think it's dope this side is almost like this like it's almost like you're trying to like do the new buck thing or the suede thing whatever story you're trying to tell if you got some internal lacing which i love i love this stuff i like that it's red on top of that so it looks like the reebok questions little nylon cables these things right here i think are really dope function wise i just don't like the way that it looks it doesn't look complete i would have loved to have had some sort of tpu strap that attaches to back here or something some kind of wing that way if you wanted to wear these casually that way you can let those things kind of dangle and stuff almost like an air jordan 4 would have been a really cool touch but as far as function goes they actually have the nylon cables underneath them and they interweave through the material and they connect to the tongue right there which is really dope so this tongue is open and then when you pull on those cables it's going to take that and it's going to push it down almost like the Kyrie 5's fly trap top i think it's cool i just don't like the way that it looks now again these are kind of a nod or not kind of they are definitely a nod to the reebok question i like the subtle touches that they've done to it my favorite thing is the open celled mesh that you have on the tongue as well as on the rear it's not the same stuff as what's on the tongue here but it kind of gives you that look and i think that's dope without it being the same thing I I think it would have been cool had it been the same material, but it's also nice that it's a little bit different while still paying tribute because you know it's not a copy and paste job now as far as sizing is concerned they do fit true to size so whatever size you typically wear that's what i would recommend i don't know what to say after that i just wanted to point out that chris might not be letting you know if these are bad boys but there will be a written performance review on the dot com side for these from who drew really yeah he got a pair i didn't know that Hmm. That's why there's more than just you around here. Well, no, I, I, I know that because I can't test everything. Yeah. You know, the last time that I did that, I tore my calf. Yeah, but so Drew that was fun. has had these for a couple weeks now, and so I'm pretty sure there will be something up soon. Oh, that's weird. I didn't even know that he had these. I should talk to Drew more often. Maybe. We talk almost every day, but whoops. Anyways, what I was going to say is don't expect a blue toe colorway. Oh, did you ask him that? Oh, hell yeah, I did. That's my favorite colorway, and it's not going to happen. He said that there's going to be a very so it'll be a deep blue toe with a gum bottom mm. but that's not the blue toe that I'm looking for what I think that they should have done though they should have done this this is uh, from the double cross so this was the red side and then there's the blue side yeah I think that they should have just done that with these they could have released them simultaneously had a training version and a hoop slash lifestyle version I think that would have been dope man but for every person who likes that there's like two people who's like can we just have matching shoes yeah look you're never <laughs> gonna please everybody no I know but I'm just saying the majority want their shoes to match they're that, over the mismatch i get that i really do because i'm one of those people i don't like mismatch stuff mm -hmm. but i would have preferred a blue toe over the red toe so just even having the one would have made you happy yes <laughs> i'd take anything i could get do you know who i feel for hmm. the people who aren't really into sneakers like that but say they're perusing they're at the mall and they only ever put up one shoe you know what shoe that happened with was it the jumpman pros yes <laughs> <laughs> there was the Chicago and the UNC one, yeah. but they're together. Mm -hmm. And even I was like, are these fake? Because like I was sliding through the product shots or whatever on online mm -hmm. and it went from the red, the black and red traditional Jumpman Pro to black and which looks great. It should be its own shoe. Like what you were saying, like don't mismatch those. And I was like, what is this? Is this like a mess up? And then I saw them in the store and I asked the person, I was like, does this come with the matching red one or does it come with the UNC side? And they said it was the UNC side. And I I was like, what a bunch of idiots. That black and UNC was so pretty, man. I would have bought those and I, I don't, the quality of the shoe is just such compared to the original version, but the colorway just won me over. So I totally would have bought that. But when it's something like this, where it is a training shoe, this is literally a performance shoe, I probably would never wear this casually. Oh yeah. No, I'm 100% for that. You know, have some fun in the yes, gym. Yes, I agree. Like that's all it is. Like just have some fun, do it to it. Like I said, if you're gonna wear, if you're gonna wear something casually and have it be a Reebok question and try to make it look like the Reebok question, I'm just wearing the Reebok question. I'm not wearing JJ's shoe. This is a performance shoe, straight up. They're mad comfortable though, I gotta say. That's good. I 
I did a performance review for the Float Ride Forever Energy 2.0, super long name. That was my introduction to Float Ride cushioning, and I was like, these are amazing. A Float Ride's no joke. We have it in that uh, Zig, the Zig Kinetica or yes. something like that. That's Float Ride inside there. Mm -hmm. uh, float Ride, like I said earlier, is PBAX, aka Boost. It's just different variations, so like a percentage up or down of, I wouldn't call it buoyancy, but like bounciness, mm -hmm. boostiness. And this is a uh, got a nice little pop in the heel. I like it. And super affordable. The, yeah. The shoe that I reviewed was only $100. Mm -hmm. And, and it was full length. Yeah. And it's probably one of my favorite runners of 2020. Float ride's no joke. You guys got to give Reebok a chance. They do have some gems in there. This being one of them. Obviously, they're trying to ride high on the Reebok question wave and stuff because they feel like for whatever reason, this is all they've got. But Reebok has a back catalog of some dope shit that they should be putting out. So give them a chance. Not everything is trash. I think that this is dope. And that's pretty pretty much it. If you're a, a training guy, uh, stay tuned for the performance review from Drew apparently on weartesters.com. This video will probably be attached to that page so you can, you know, hear my dumb ass talk about a shoe that I'll never wear for training, but then you can actually read what they're all about. But I do know my tech specs, so hey. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. Again, big thank you to Trevor for sending these our way. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, guys, have a good one.